What's up everyone, it's Ryan here and today we're back with another video and we're talking about more Transformers Bumblebee and a certain character who is actually really popular among fans and their fate in the Transformers Bumblebee movie. Now I'm doing certain characters because they're really like fan favorites so I'm going to be doing some other ones that I'm going to reveal in a second. But yes, today we're going to be talking about this certain character's fate. I'm not going to reveal it yet because there are spoilers for this character and for the Bumblebee movie, so look out for that. But yes, today we're going to be looking at this certain character's fate, because, of course, they're popular in, like, the 1980s, like, shows and movies and stuff. And, like, yeah, we're going to be getting into this character. So, without any further ado, that's Before we announce who this character and what their fate is in the Bumblebee movie, there will be spoilers, of course, for the character and for the Bumblebee movie. So click out if you haven't seen the Bumblebee movie. So guys, today we're actually going to be looking at the character known as Cliff Jumper and his fate in the Bumblebee movie. Now, I have considered doing these videos for Dropkick, Shatter, and Blitzwing, so if you want to see that, leave a like. And with all that out of the way, let's get into it. So in the scene, you actually get to see Cliff Jumper's escape pod first because he did escape the fall of Cybertron, and it seems like he actually crashed on like the moon of Saturn, which is not too far from Earth, which means that like the Decepticons aren't too far behind, who are actually the ones who intercepted his pod and made it crash. Then we actually figure out that Shatter and Dropkick, the two main villains of this movie, actually made Cliffjumper's pod crash, and it seems like they're interrogating him of where Optimus Prime is, with Shatter being the good cop being all calm and stuff, and Dropkick holding Cliffjumper's arm. So yeah, these guys, you do not want to mess with them. Then you actually get to see Cliffjumper, who looks like completely beaten down and broken, because it seems like the Decepticons are really just putting the heat on him. Dropkick pulled out his arm, so you can't blame him, but it seems like he's still Still being strong. Now, Cliff Jumper was a really cool Autobot in this movie, and you could really tell that he was actually true to the cause because he just keeps saying, I'm Cliff Jumper, I'm a lieutenant to the Autobot Resistance, and that's really cool because he does not like Decepticons in the old TV shows or the movies, and you can clearly tell that he does not like the Decepticons, and you can't blame him, they're evil. Now, unfortunately, during the interrogation, Cliff Jumper was actually hit again hard by Dropkick, revealing that, like, location of Bumblebee on Earth. Now, Cliff Jumper didn't do this on purpose because it was actually just some sort of part in them that actually just activated like Bumblebee's location and then the Decepticons tracked it but yes Cliff Jumper did not do this on purpose because he's too loyal to the Autobots. So then after like Bumblebee's like location was revealed like the Decepticons really didn't need like Cliff Jumper anymore so they really just cut him right down the middle and I think that was the end of Cliff Jumper's story for this prequel or reboot, whatever you want to call it, but it seems like we're now going to be moving on to why Travis Knight actually made this sort of scene actually what it was actually meant for, so let's get into it. So during a recent interview, we actually got our answer. With Up Rocks, Travis Knight actually said, You have to understand, if they encounter Bumblebee, particularly in the state that he's in for much of the movie, where he's lost his voice, he's lost his memory, he can't really fight. He's just trying to find his way. Now there is more, so let's get into it. Now going through the interview with Up Rocks, he, Travis Knight also said, And Cliff Jumper is similar to Bumblebee as far as their size and what they can do. And again, that's all by design. That's essentially what they would do to him. He would not be a very nice end, but you have to understand that if they encounter him, that is bad. It's really bad for our hero that things are not going to end well. So that's basically like the thing he had to say about Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper. Because like Cliff Jumper is sort of considered a repaint of Bumblebee. So yeah, it seems like this is sort of an introduction of what Shatter and Dropkick can do. But yes, let's move on. But when I actually saw, like, the Bumblebee movie again, I actually learned this before I saw it again, and I actually did compare both interrogation scenes, and it seems like they were really similar, because it seems like the Decepticons were holding nothing back. They kept punching on them, like Shatter being the good cop, and Dropkick being the bad cop. But yes, it seems like I could definitely see the similarities, and I think Travis Knight actually had a good idea about this. By each end of the interrogations, it seems like whether it was Bumblebee or Cliff Jumper, Dropkick would actually eliminate each of them. Sort of going back on what Travis Knight about how they would not be a very nice end. I think this is true, and this is actually shown when Dropkick actually just splits down Cliff Jumper right in the middle, eliminating him or eliminating Bumblebee with a blaster. Sure, Bumblebee comes back, but it's his movie anyway. But yes, I do think Travis Knight was actually doing really well on actually showing how this is true, how they would not meet a very nice end, even though Bumblebee comes back and actually avenges Cliff Jumper and gets his revenge on Shatter and Dropkick. 
So the main reason of Cliffjumper actually being chosen to be eliminated was really to actually show that if Shatter and Rocket come across Bumblebee, the same thing could happen. He could be eliminated too, and he was eventually eliminated, but he did come back, which was all well and good. But yes, it does really like explain how these guys are like twins. Like if one of them gets eliminated and the other one is found, chances are the same thing could happen to the other twin. So yes, that's basically why Cliffjumper was chosen to be eliminated by Shatter and Dropkick. So yes guys, there you have it. That is why Cliffjumper was eliminated. And it seems like this is actually just sending a message that if Bumblebee actually gets in trouble with the Decepticons, it might not end well. But that's actually just ended off with an R.I.P. Cliffjumper. Rest in peace, Cliffjumper. Alrighty guys, that's the end of the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leaving a like would be great, or subscribing, huge help to the channel. And you guys are actually really great. And if you actually wanna see like the Blitzwing, Shatter or Dropkick video actually talking about like what their fates were in like the Bumblebee movie like in my thoughts on it Make sure to leave a like, comment or a like or subscribe and just like leave a comment of actually saying What character you want to see next for what video so until next time guys? I'll see you later. You're awesome, and I hope you have a great day